Hey everyone, it is John from Seattle Coffee Gear. We are here in the commercial kitchen and we're going to be doing an in-depth look at the La Marzocco Two Group Strata AV and this one has the AVR. We did do more of an overview look at this machine in another video, so if you're looking for the short format version, go ahead and check out this one. If you're looking to get into the programming and the deep technical stuff on this machine, you're in the right spot. This is going to be a longer video, so just know that going into it. Well, to start, let's talk about some of the specs of this machine. This is the two-group model, and this is also the AV model, as you can tell from this group cap with these buttons here. This is the ABR model, so that means it has scales built in here, and we'll talk a little bit more about what these scales do and what additional programming you get because of these. This also has these insulated steam wands. Uh, you do get two steam wands on both sides here. And then you also have your hot water spout. It has a little bit of insulation, but I still wouldn't touch this while you're pulling hot water. It does have a mix valve down here that allows you to adjust the temperature of your hot water between all the way cold, um, just the water pressure or water line coming in, um, all the way up to the uh, just the water off of that boiler so you get that crackling kind of classic hot water. The steam actuators on this machine are located up here. Um, and these are kind of like a drive-by wire steaming system, so it's more of an electronic control. Um, if I move it to here, it takes a second for that to engage, but you do have a very finite control of your steam wands there. And these are completely cool while I'm steaming, so great features with that. Um, this valve is a pretty complicated piece, so it is a little bit expensive if you need to replace it. Uh, but it works really well for steaming. It's really easy to just kick it to where you want it and then kind of go hands-free. You don't have to adjust it again because it is that electric, electronic control of that valve. Your hot water button is up here. Just turn that off, get rid of my old water there. So I do wish that this was moved to maybe the groups or someplace that was a little bit more accessible. Uh, but that's kind of the La Marzocco style to just have your one hot water button in one spot on the machine. So that's right here on this machine. Um, and then let's talk about uh, the settings on these buttons here. So these buttons, you get two buttons right here and then you get a continuous run. Um, the little swirl up there is La Marzocco's uh, designation for continuous run. So if I press that, it's going to keep running until I stop it again. And then I have these two buttons. Technically, they're supposed to be like a single shot, a double shot, but these can be whatever you want to program them to. So you do have as well uh, two, uh, two settings per button. So if I press it once and just let go, it gives me one. And if I press and hold, it gives me another one. If it's flashing rapidly, that means I'm in my second setting. If it's flashing slowly, that means I'm in my first setting. So that means you have four settings per group. Most coffee shops are maybe using uh, one or two settings, like a regular and a decaf, or maybe you're throwing in a third setting for a single origin espresso or something like that. Uh, most shops are just gonna be using one of these buttons majorly, and then maybe using um, one of those other settings for a decaf. But it is nice to have all those settings just in case you need them. Um, this does have three boilers on it because it does have individual brew boilers for each group. And then the steam boiler is an 8 liter boiler. And then there's two smaller boilers right there. Um, your total power going to all those is 4,900 watts. And those boilers are insulated as well. This does have some carryover from the GB5 where it has the uh, heat exchanger inside that steam boiler that has a mix valve on it at the end of it. So it's feeding preheated water to each of the brew boilers. On the GB5, it's set to about 180 degrees. So it's feeding 180 degree water to those brew boilers. That way you're not just dumping cold water in and dropping that temperature mid-brew. It's a lot more temperature stable. And then the heating elements don't have to work as much because the boiler is insulated as well. You don't see a ton of temperature fluctuation on this machine. And because you have individual boilers, you can set individual temperatures for each of these groups. And then that also means if I pull a shot over here, 
this temperature stays the same. So if I am looking for consistency, this machine is going to do a great job at that. That covers a lot of kind of the overall features and functions of this machine. Now that we've talked about that, let's look at our programming on this screen here and let's get really in depth there. We'll reset and look at that. Alrighty, let's talk about the programming on this machine. Starts with the same way that you get into the programming of pretty much all Amarzokos that have programming and that's by holding the continuous run on the far left hand button. Hold that down for five seconds and it takes you into this programming menu here. So just to start out, let's scroll through this top level of menu settings here um, and take a look. So as I scroll through, we have the group dose settings, then we have scale configuration, then we have tea settings, that's your hot water spout, then we have coffee boiler settings, pre-wet settings, that's like a pre-infusion or bloom, and then your exit menu. Um, if I hit OK, that's the continuous run, it has a little OK up here as well. That'll kick me out of that menu. Um, another like escape button is if you press the OK and then the double shot at the same time. I'll just demonstrate that real quick. If I say go into here and I am like way in the menu, I can't remember how to get out. If I press those two, it just takes me all the way out of the programming and back to just my, my regular run setting. So if you're ever deep in the programming menu, feel like you're lost, the continuous run and the double shot, press those at the same time and it'll kick you out of there, get you back to safety. Let's get back into the programming menu by holding this again for five seconds. All right, let's start with the group dose settings. If I click into this, um, this is going to take me through a next level of menus here. And it's going to start with program volume dose, and then program mass dose, and then group one dose settings, group two dose settings, copy dose, reset volume doses, group dose exit. So if I go here to program volume dose, uh, once you see this, you are in that programming stage. So then what I can do is press any one of these buttons and it's going to record whatever that volume is by counting the revolutions of the flow meter inside. And then it's gonna repeat whatever those revolutions were at the press of that button. So I'll X that out of there. To the next one here, we see program mass dose. That gets into using these scales here. So once I put a shot glass down and then I enter here, let's say I'm going to program this first button. I press that and it takes, well, it's going to be easier to explain that later. So that was 21 grams and then I would that already is saved there, but this is kind of tricky because what you saw there was actually the tear timeout. So if I had coffee in here, it would take a little bit longer for the espresso to get through and down to the shot pitcher. So we have this programmed, we'll talk about this a little bit later, to wait four seconds and then tear. So you can be kind of shuffling around before you get your pitcher down. So then it's an accurate amount uh, that it's tearing out there. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of there. <clears throat> and then we get into the group one dose settings. This is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Those other ones are a little bit easier to understand. So if I go into here, this is the mode that I'm running for group one. Now, right now we have it in mass mode. That means that it is pulling shots and um, stopping them automatically based on the mass or how much they weigh out here. If I click on that, it's flashing, that means I'm ready to program, or ready to change that. Pulses is your standard volumetrics, so that's the counting the revolutions of the flow meter inside there. Mass, like we said, using that scale, and then brew ratio is what the ABR, or auto brew ratio, for this machine stands for. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to mass and save that, and then you have in here all the rest of your buttons. I'm going to exit group one and go in here to group two. So group two, I have this group set up to run on that brew ratio setting. What this does is you input a ratio into the machine, 
click on that. It's already in there. So then group two, button one. So group two, button one. This button is set up for a ratio of one to 1.8. That means that if I have say 20 grams of coffee, it's gonna take that 20 grams in, multiply it by 1.8, and that's gonna give me my weight out. Um, if it was one to 1.5 and I had 20 grams in, it would give me 30 grams of espresso out. So this is pretty cool because what you can actually set this up to do is to use the scales to weigh how much coffee is in your portafilter, then put your portafilter into the group and start pulling a shot, and then it's going to calculate your out weight based on your in weight. This seems really cool and it does work pretty well in the right scenario, but in a coffee shop, it can be a little bit clunky. I'll show you guys why that is when we actually pull some shots on this machine a little bit later. So to change that, you just click on that and then you can change it. I'm gonna keep it at 1.8 and then group two, button two is at two and then continuous. So then here we have <coughs> pardon me, the group two portafilter mass, and that is what this portafilter weighs without any coffee in it. Um, this will become important a little bit later when we talk about the auto brew ratio functionality of this and specifically how that works, so we won't cover that right now. This is the coffee mass that's pre-programmed in here. I'm actually going to take this and drop it down to 17.5 because that's what I was pulling at, ooh, actually, I believe I was pulling at 18. So we'll save that there. And then I'll exit out of group two. And then it takes me to this copy dose setting. This is a cool feature that most La Marzocos have nowadays. If you have the volumetrics um, on them, if you're using an AV version, it allows you to take a button to copy and then paste it somewhere else. We talked about that in the Linea PB review, similar features there. One thing to remember here is it's really only going to reflect if these two are in the same modes. This one's in mass, this one's in brew ratio, so this one is not going to translate the mass program setting into the brew ratio program setting. So if you're frustrated with that copy paste or wondering what's going wrong there, just confirm that you, these two are in the same settings. Uh, probably both of these are gonna be in mass or in pulses, uh, but if you're frustrated and wondering why it's not copying and it's not working, check to make sure they're in the same settings before you call your technician. Enter to exit and then reset volume doses. Whatever the factory had it at is what it's going to reset those to. Exit. <clears throat> now let's go to scale configuration. This is back to that top level of the menu and then we're going to go back down in here to scale configuration. Looking at this here, it says scale B1 short, stop 2.3 grams early. It's a little bit confusing, so let's just explain that. That's referring to button one here, and what that's saying is that the group is gonna cut off when the scale is 2.3 grams away from my target weight. Um, so once you stop the pump and that valve opens, a little bit more coffee is gonna trickle out there. We figured out that on this group with the coffee we're using, it's about 2.3 grams. So that helps the scales work accurately to help uh, pull consistent weighing shots every single time. <clears throat> Takes a little bit of trial and error because this doesn't have like a drip prediction like some of the other machines do. But scrolling through here, you can change it for uh, all your buttons and then scale tear time. That's what I was talking about before. What I like to do is figure out about how long it takes your shot to drop from here and then subtract a little bit of time and set it to whatever that is. So if my shot is gonna drop at five to five to six seconds, that's when I see espresso coming out of the tips of the portafilter. <clears throat> I set this for four seconds so then it waits till the exact right time to tear. I'm going to exit out of there and go to T. This is just changing the T dose and then how long that dose is for. And your two different doses there. And that's done by the press and then press and hold. <coughs> coffee boiler. This allows you to change your coffee boiler temperatures. This is your actual temperature right out here. And this is your target temperature. 
out of there. And then pre-wet, this allows us to change the pre-wet per group. So my group one is set for three seconds of wet, three, th three seconds hold. I'm gonna turn that down because that seems a little bit long to me. <clears throat> and then this has zero pre-wet. So we have two options here. We pull, we use a lot of different coffees and we take a little bit longer to make our coffee. So it's okay for us to have different settings. A couple of the staff members have been pretty frustrated with all the different settings we've had on this because it's not the most user friendly once you have it so customized like we have it, but it allows for a lot of experimentation. Exit the menu and now we're back out. Let's go ahead and reset and then pull a shot in mass mode so you guys can see that and then pull a shot in brew ratio so you can see that as well. And then we'll make a milk based drink and wrap it up. All right, we'll reset. Let's go ahead and start with the mass mode so you guys can see that. I'm gonna run this in just the continuous run. When I'm using this continuous run button, I'll show you real quick without a port filter in there. When I'm using that, that uh, pre-brew is not engaged, but when I use this button, that pre-brew is engaged, so it's two seconds on, two seconds off, then brew. So just to show you guys that, so there's no, or less confusion there, hopefully. And let's get some coffee. Um, I'm always experimenting with different coffees on espresso, um, one of the perks of the job. So today we're using the Espresso Republic Raven's Dark Roast. It's actually pretty light, um, but pretty tasty on espresso. Um, the cherry and graham cracker, and I would say a little bit of chocolate definitely come through. So if you want to experiment with something different than you would normally do on espresso, this is not a bad choice. We're still using the uh, E65S from Malconig. And let me get out to that 20 grams, or 18 grams, my apologies. So that's not to confuse the espresso machine. Let's go ahead and tamp that. Okay, we have that ready now. So I'm gonna use my continuous run. Once again, 18 grams of coffee loaded in the porta filter. Um, and I'm looking for about one to 1.8 or two out. So between 34 to 36 grams is what I've been experimenting with. So we'll start that. Once I start the shot, you'll notice that um, kind of floor, four blocks will flash a couple times. That's the machine telling us that it's getting ready to tear. And then after four seconds or four flashes, it'll be teared and then it'll be actually actively weighing what's coming out. So here we go. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So there it's teared now. And now my shot's pulling. Um, this saves you from having to put a scale up here and having to press tear and all that jazz. So let's go ahead and stop that. <clears throat> and that went a little bit long. So I was about 40 seconds. This coffee's a little bit older, so that can happen sometimes there. Um, but 40 seconds or 40 grams at 21 seconds. It's a darker coffee, but not super dark. So that is okay. But that's an example of how that mass mode works. Um, as you saw, it was just weighing out the coffee and it had that four second tear time and that's about how it worked there. So let's go ahead and knock that. I will dump this out, dump that out. Let's do the shot pitcher shuffle. Let's talk about the brew ratio mode that this group is currently set for. You'll notice earlier, if you remember, that this, but this group with these two buttons, you had one setting if you tap and then another setting if you tap and hold. This one, if you were watching closely, only had one setting for each of these buttons. That's because a different um, setting is engaged 
when you press and hold these buttons. And that's related to that brew ratio. So I'm gonna wipe out this port of filter and then look at the, the screen while I do this. But when I hold my button here for the double shot, it's gonna take me into like a port of filter tear mode. So push and hold, and then it gives me that block, those little blocks, and it's telling me I'm tearing. <clears throat> I set my port of filter down, and then it weighs it, saves that in there. And so now when I come over to here, And in a perfect world, I would only have to be having to do this once like every hour or so, but we all know that's not necessarily how a perfect world works in coffee. So then I hold button one. Once again, it gives me that uh, okay there, has the negative weight of the porta filter, and then it tells me that I have 19.3 grams of coffee in. So now that's saved in there, <clears throat> and these buttons here are programmed for 1.8, 1 to 1.8, and 1 to 2. So when I put this in the group and I set my shot picture here, I'm going to press this button and the machine is going to calculate. It's going to say 19.3 grams times 1.8, and then it's going to tell me my target weight out. So here we go. So my target weight out is 30.9. And let's see how accurate the brew ratio is to that. It's pulling a little bit slower because my dose was a little bit higher compared to this one. I did not adjust the grind setting in between those shots, but I'm guessing this will probably taste a little bit better because it's pulling a little bit longer. And we did have that drip prediction set up. Looks like it was about a gram over which is about as accurate as a barista is going to be, honestly. Um, take that off. And that was 27 seconds as well. So my target was 30.9. It pulled 32. <clears throat> Just for kicks now, let's go ahead and taste this. All right, here we go. Just a little bit there. It does smell a little bit darker. I'm okay with that. Cool it down a little bit. Yeah, that tastes pretty good. Um, I definitely like that better on this group at the slightly higher temperature, um, but for the milk-based one, we'll use this group in mass mode um, and do it that way. But let's go ahead and reset and make a milk-based drink in mass mode, and I'll use the volumetric setting on this for that as well. So here we go. Let's go ahead and make a cappuccino. I have 18 and a half grams loaded in my basket here. Pretty level tamp, actually, not bad. Um, let's go ahead and lock that in place. Um, I'm just going to do the continuous run again uh, instead of using that pre-programmed button, so I'll do that. Um, let's go ahead and get that up there. Purge my steam. And here we go. that off about 32 grams out nice velvety microphone and let's see what we can pour Oh, just ran out of the end there. All right, so let's give it a taste as I spill all over the counter. Feeling like some stacks today. All right, that's tasting pretty good. And um, that dark roast is a pretty good complement to the milk in that. Um, it's a little bit hotter than I'd like, um, honestly, but I prefer my drinks cool anyways, and that was my fault, so. The milk on it is a really good quality, um, really good microphone. 
really easy to get um, quality microfilm out of these Lumber Zoco steam wands. They've put a lot of effort into the steam tip design, so big fan of that. Um, and then also not having to worry about this uh, when you turn it on. If you saw when I started, it was a little bit interesting getting this uh, to turn on right when I was starting uh, my steaming. So that's something that takes a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're using something more than a little pitcher like this. With a pitcher like this, you have plenty of room above the drip tray. If you're using a pitcher like this, you kind of have to scoop up or move it out here to just come straight up. So something to be aware of there. Um, and then it just takes that a second to react, to build up. But again, once you're used to that, it's not that big of a deal. Overall, this machine has a lot of customizability in that programming menu. Uh, a lot of stuff that you're probably not gonna get into until you're more comfortable with the machine. So I hope this video has helped to clarify how some of the programming works, maybe helped you understand your machine a little bit better, get more out of your machine. If you have any questions about this beast of a machine um, or think we didn't cover something in the video, leave us a comment down below. We'd love to help with any of that. I'm sure this was a ton of information to take in. So if you made it all the way through, congrats. Um, you get a prize. I don't know what that is. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more of our videos, in-depth reviews, and stuff like that, um, turn on the notifications if you want to hear about when we release a new video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.